What is up, people? Playing the Baltimore Ravens. So you're on the first play here, I come out in quarters. I'm going to do a show blitz adjustment to bring both of my safeties down and press. Unfortunately, that also presses my cornerbacks, which gives them a chance of getting a press win and getting over the top with no safety help on the outside. Here motions over to three strong, so on the weak side of safety, what I should be looking for is a crossing route by that number three root guy. Fortune Marquise Browns gets a press win over the top, so I have to bail and just go over the top of him and prevent a one play touchdown. Fortunately, we were able to stack Lamar on that one. There are a bunch. You see the issue with the strong side safety just getting too wide. Then you also see the three rep getting way too wide for some reason running out to cover grass. If he sat in the middle of the field, Lamar wouldn't have been able to take off and run. There a bubble screen. His receiver is fortunately didn't block for him and we were able to blow that one up. Number three, Buzz. Not sure why he tried to hurdle there. I think it was probably a wrong button push. Third and seven, I'm going to go man coverage here. Let's play tight. Don't give him any wide open receivers. Here I'm looking to take away that dig crossing the middle of the field with the robber. Fortunately, he gets that post or deep cross or wide open, or not wide open across the field. It was a contested catch. We had two guys there. His receiver just had better position for it, and it's a really good throw. Here you see Malik Collins makes a play, just pushing the left tackle to the ground and sacking Lamar. Here, you're going to see me make a mistake. What I really should be doing is using the vert hook instead of the three wreck. See the three wreck, I didn't match number three vertical. If I had been using the vert hook instead, I could have matched that or come down on top of that dig route, and number three vertical would have been matched. Fortunately, he took a sack there. So far, I've messed up my coverage assignments twice, which is not good. Third and 25, he has a ton of time there. Fortunately, he can't find anything open and just has to throw it away. So 4th and 25, I'm not sure why he's going for it here, I'm just going to play man coverage because he's got 4 receivers on the strong side of the field. Zone's not going to be good against that and match isn't going to work against it. So starting out here in offense, I'm going to come out with a quick game with Y stick. Also got Davis Mills at quarterback. Texans took him with their top pick in the draft which I don't think was a good move. I think he can be a solid journeyman type of quarterback or career backup. I don't think he's going to be a franchise quarterback from what I've seen. But in Madden, that doesn't really matter. Quarterbacks are almost always automatic on their passes. Actually, doesn't really play that much of a factor, even though he's a quarterback in the low 60s. I think he's like 63 overall or something like that. His main drawbacks in Madden are low throw power and no mobility. And also, he's not very good under pressure. See that pick, there are really three factors that went into that pick. One is I dropped back several yards, which I shouldn't have done. The other, I was late on the read. I threw it uh, right after the break instead of right on the break. And the final one is Mills just doesn't have that strong of an arm to be able to squeeze the ball in there. Here, we're seeing Bunch again. This time I'm playing with a uh, cover two to the Bunch side of the field. So hopefully we, I'm hoping the deep half can take away that streak route, but as you can see there, he doesn't. Unfortunately, my opponent didn't see that or didn't wasn't willing to throw it because otherwise that would have been an easy touchdown for him. Brings up fourth and five. Here I'm on three rack. I've got number three vertical, which is the halfback. It just has so much time there. I get kind of messed up with all the guys crossing my face and unfortunately, J.K. Dobbin stepped out of bounds. I don't get much out of that. Here I'm going to check to an RPO zone stick play. Normally what I'll do here is have a read RPO if I have an athletic quarterback, but Mills isn't that, so we're going to have the RPO stick play. Brings up third and four, I'm going to come out here and mesh. Don't really have anywhere to go with the football, he's dropping eight guys into coverage. He's going to take off and run for the first down there. Here now, first of 10. We'll run some guard tackle counter tray from pistol trips left. 
So he, he is definitely in some type of man coverage there, and he's going to be blitzing one of those guys off the edges, which is why I wanted to run it. Here, back out on defense. Just watching for the halfback going vertical, otherwise I'm going to try and take away any crossing routes. So the halfback does go vertical. And this is that same play he ran that he could have had a touchdown on earlier. But this time I've got the cover two side to the quarter side of the field. So he's able to get that corner out wide open. Here runs three buzz. Just going to rob that out route. Fortunately, he's able to get a broken tackle with Mark Andrews and pick up the first. Here, I just pick myself off with my defender. He's up second and ten. Trying to stay on top of any route crossing in front of me. Or he's just trying to reroute guys, and he has a ton of time. No one breaks in to chase him. Again, he has plenty of time, but Bradley Roby breaks that pass up. Texans actually traded him away to the Saints before the season, which kind of dates what gives you an idea of when this game was played as well before the Week 1 roster updates. Sometime in early September was when I played this game. Here, 4th and 7, he's just late on that throw. If he had thrown that earlier and passed it to the outside, he could have had the first down. So out of here on offense, I'm going to go with a white cross concept. We're able to complete the ball to Kiki QT, who the Texans also wound up, uh, I believe they cut him, I don't think they traded him. There, I don't really have anything that I like, so I'm just going to throw that away. I'll go with a four birds concept here. There, we got the seam ball, but Mills just overthrows that. So, third and ten, I'm just trying to get into field goal range here. We're able to complete the pass, but. I couldn't get down and call the timeout in time. I would have been in field goal range and had a shot there. Uh, coming out here in the third quarter, it's going to go with an onside kick. Fortunately, we're ready for it. We're, I'm always watching the uh, kickoff screen and making sure that they pick whatever type of kick they're doing before I pick the return. That's how you prevent the or surprise onside kicks. Just make sure they pick their play before you do. That was not a good decision. Even if I completed that, I wasn't going to get any yards. That should have just been either try and scramble or throw the ball away there. Here, a second 10, we're able to squeeze the ball in and pick up the first. And I'm going to come out in wide corner. And the receiver just cuts off his route. That wasn't a good throw by Mills either. What I was trying to do is give it a hard 3 o'clock pass lead outside. Ball's thrown way too deep for that. Put the ball to the outside and the receiver doesn't cut off his route, that could have been an easy first. Here. I'm gonna run mesh. Get tackled forwards for a few yards to bring up third and six. Here I'm pretty positive it looks like a blitz. Or a cover zero blitz. We're just gonna run stick. I'm looking for that backside slant. If he vacates the middle of the field, we're throwing that. And we got it. Or we didn't actually get it. Pass is broken up and the receiver dropped it. We have to settle for three there. Gives us a two possession lead. Comes out with a read option on first and 15, and Dobbins is able to break some tackles and pick up some yards. There, cover three cloud. What normally I like to do with that is user that corner or the hook defender on the cloud side of the field and if any route breaks out like a corner route I've got to match that vertical play some robber coverage there and he's able to fit that in on the slant route after it crosses the entire field and his hand off to Dobbins but he trips up over the lineman's feet and falls down Still got four yards out of it. And 
there you see a problem. Or not really a problem, that's a uh, coverage beater there for quarters. He's got the switch route for a concept there where he's got the post and the corner route. And he's just able to beat up the man on him. That was Marquise Brown against Bradley Roby, I think. It's too much of a speed difference there. Now 7-10. Here I'm going to check to a run play out of uh, Trips look to the right. I think it's Trips halfback weak. And we're able to pick up the first down on that. There we go, no huddle. Don't give them any time to adjust and do anything too crazy. So here I'm going to go with white corner. I'm going to check to a white corner with uh, two slants on the back side of the play. I don't really like anything that I see, so I'm going to wind up taking a sack. Didn't have any safer, easy throws to make. Here, second and 20, I'm going to go white cross. So he runs two men under. We don't have anything open, so I'm just going to scramble out and try to make something happen, which we do. Make a guy miss, and we pick up a huge gain on this play. Here, uh, I'm going to check to zone bubble play. So if we got the numbers out the outside, we're going to be able to throw the bubble and pick up some yards. Here, second and one on the goal line. This is a situational formation. I'm going to come out and counter. And unfortunately, the problem with doing that play is we're running right at Clayus Campbell, and he tackles us for a loss. So we're going to go to power from the halfback to weak side of the field and run it away from Clayus Campbell. And this time, we get into the end zone. Here, first and ten. I'm going to make a mistake of not doing anything to prevent what he did last time. He's going to run the exact same play and get off a one-play touchdown. Really, I've forgotten what formation he ran that play out of, so I wasn't ready for it on that play. I thought he might go back to it later in the game, but not on the exact same, or the very next play. Here, just trying to run inside zone, but we get blown up and hit in the backfield and lose the yard on that one. Second 11, we're running mesh here. Here we got the corner out and we pick up the first. Here, um, run Y sail. And there, that really wasn't the best decision in the world. Really probably should have been picked off. Here by corner. And you see I make a mistake with dropping back way too far with my quarterback. He's got low throw power. You cannot do that. Just can't get away with playing like that. And if I had stepped up in the pocket or not dropped back and thrown a tad bit earlier, I probably could have completed that. So now suddenly we've blown a two possession lead and we're down 21-17. Here I don't have anything open initially. I'm just going to scramble out of the pocket and find a receiver open and get the pass off. Time for a game-winning drive. There one by cross. Unfortunately, I dropped back too far again, and we're not able to get the ball out there in time and get the receiver with his feet down in bounds. There, we're able to get that hitch open. Brings up third and two. I'm going to run mesh here. That's a really tight throw. Really difficult throw. Mills, you see what I was talking about where it actually doesn't really matter in this game. Mills is able to squeeze the ball in there and put it right on him. as a long throw too, for some, especially for someone who has accuracy in the 60s. There, run wide corner. Don't like anything. Let's just throw that away. Brings up third and eight. Here I'm going to run mesh. Just tag the receiver to a dig route so he's over the top and trying to conflict some zone guys. Okay. See there, he's going to drop nine guys into coverage. I've got nowhere to go with the ball. Just have to throw that away. Brings up fourth and down. Fourth down, got to have it. Run wide shallow again. He drops nine guys into coverage. So I'm forced to just try and scramble around and make something happen out of off script. And we're able to do that with the playmaker and possession catch. Here, first and goal, running Y-Stick from empty. 
Here I'm anticipating a blitz. So I'm thinking I've got to get the ball out pretty fast. I'm just letting the clock wind down, make sure he's got no time if I do score. There we had the window, we just couldn't get the ball there fast enough and it gets broken up. Here's second and goal, running wide stick again, this from uh, got our back in the backfield. And we're able to hit the back in the flat for a touchdown. So we're going to go up 24-21, 12 seconds left. All he has to do is get in field goal range and he's got three timeouts. Here I'm going to do something I don't usually do, which is go with a Tampa 2 style defense. Just don't want to give up any big plays to inside and I don't want to give anything to outside either. It's time to take anything away that he has. He's going to take one last shot and it gets broken up. We escape with the win in that one. There you see the stats. Mills, his stats don't look good that game. Two picks, 55% completion, only 238 passing. You know, 15 of 27. A lot of those were throwaways though. And I just didn't have receivers open. It's mainly because of the man coverage he is running. Uh, Philip Lindsay had a really good game. He had uh, two rushing touchdowns and a receiving touchdown. Really, what it, the only, main thing I needed to do that game was get more touches to Brandon Cooks. He only had that one catch. But that's going to be it for this game. Peace.